again. Hi everyone, it's Jewel and welcome back to another art tour around London. We're starting out at the Artist Room, which is actually a brand new gallery space that just opened this month. And this exhibition was looking at the subject of windows and how various artists explore this theme. There was a lot of really nice works in this show and they had a wide variety of mediums, which I really liked. One of my favorites though was this piece by Japanese photographer Daido Moriyama, which uses arepure bokeh style that was developed in the 1960s in Japan and creates this really blurry and out of focus image. It draws inspiration from a feeling of oversaturization of images and information and kind of this overload of information that drew inspiration originally from this period in Japan in the post-World War II era but I think really holds true to today and how much we are all just given so much information at once. Another highlight for me was Prem Sahib's sweat panel series, which is created by placing individual droplets of resin onto aluminum which create this appearance of a pane of glass filled with condensation. And I was staring at it for so long in the gallery because it looked so real, like it was really just water droplets on here. Um, but knowing now that the artist has to individually put each of these droplets, it kind of adds even more awe to the piece. There was also this interesting dynamic um, as we're looking at artworks related to windows in this exhibition and then looking out from this third floor gallery and seeing people in the office across the street still working. It almost seemed like this was part of the exhibition itself too. But overall I really like the show. It's a relatively small space but I think they packed a lot of variety and um, even some big names into this exhibition. Definitely recommend checking it out and definitely support this new gallery space. Next, we went to an interesting short running exhibition by Wickerham and Lomax, lo located in the basement of the London Edition Hotel. It felt honestly so exclusive because we entered through the main doors with doormen into this beautiful um, hotel lobby and bar space. And then we took the stairs down to what also seemed like a very like secretive gallery exhibition space. And the space usually serves as like a private event or a club space. And it fits well with the aesthetic of the exhibition because you have all these neon lights, some flashing strobe lights, reflective surfaces. If it was a bit busier, honestly, it would have felt like a club. And the artists are exploring this idea of the boundary between real and artificial. So on these surfaces, we have CGI created people but they're covering the same spaces that we also see the reflection of ourselves in. So we have this dynamic between the artificial and the real. In the center of the space, there's also this large acrylic box covered in these um, images, but you can see in the middle people have put in money. And these are actually donations for the Dances After Dark which is an organization based in Maryland that helps sexual assault survivors with recovery through dance. I found this to be a really interesting exhibition. I liked the location that it was in, within the hotel like this, and it's always fun to have something a bit different, you know? <laughs> a bit of a different atmosphere in the space as well and kind of not just having the same white walled gallery spaces in every exhibition that you go to. So 
So if you're ever around Tottenham Court Road, just pop into the London Edition Hotel and check this out before it closes. Our last gallery stop of the evening was to Rhodes Contemporary Art. And this gallery always puts on really great shows um, and the space tonight was filled with people enjoying the new works. And tonight was the opening of Irish painter Mazur's new show, Hinterland, filled with vibrant paintings. The artist is well known for his use of dynamic color, but in this show, he's also looking to nature for inspiration. Mazur often goes into nature to find peace and to be more mindful. And in these works, the black outlines are actually shapes pulled from botanical forms. And he's hoping to bring this sense of peace found, that he finds in nature and sharing that feeling with the viewer. And I found this quite interesting because although the artist is drawing inspiration from nature, I find that the use of color and these graphic shapes also really reminded me of street art and graffiti, which seems to be almost the exact opposite of nature. But I thought it was an interesting kind of play between the two styles. And my favorite aspect of these works was definitely the texture, because as you get close, you kind of see these new aspects that you don't see from a distance. And when you get close, you can see the layers and layers of paint built up underneath to create unique surfaces beneath this flat color that sits on top. And this show is on till the 20th of November, so make sure to check the works out for yourself and let me know what you think. Finally, we made it to the Royal Opera House for a showing of the Dante Project. And I know this isn't technically an art gallery, but walking through the ground floor honestly almost felt like one. There were really neat dioramas of the theater throughout the past hundred plus years and beautiful costumes from past shows on display. And of course, I had to check out the gift shops for all the cute little artsy and ballet themed gifts and souvenirs. And so I was drawn to this show because the set design was done by Tassida Dean. And if you've seen my previous vlogs, you may recognize this work from the Frith Street Gallery. Here's a little flashback in case you don't remember. Um, and these black and white style works were featured in part one of the show and the large piece, colorful piece with the tree was shown in part two. But they're really beautifully integrated into the show and even within the acts, these negative images were slowly converted into a positive or normal image, which was really neat to see. Beyond the set and costume design, the ballet dancers were of course incredible and it was so amazing to hear a live pit orchestra and be back in the theater for the first time since COVID. I really recommend seeing the Dante Project, but if you can't score tickets, make sure to visit the Frith Street Gallery to see the works in person. And that's all for today's Art Night Out in London. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the art world and art events in London. See you next time.